Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things could get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming a very awesome radio show host. I am talking about Mike D'Astasio, the host of Real Talk with the Hollywood Kid, a very entertaining not really a podcast, more like a radio show um, based out of Boston. It's a, really, it's a really great radio show where he interviews old, old Hollywood legends going back to the 50s all the way to the 90s. He's interviewed just the, the creme, the creme la, la creme of Hollywood legends, some that I've interviewed and others I haven't. I mean, he's had everyone from Tom Dreesen to... Bill Duke to George Maharis to um, Marion Ross, Burt Ward, a couple of people there I named that I've interviewed myself. And I'm going to have him on today to talk about all of that stuff. He also, like me, he also does uh, tributes to uh, late uh, stars who have passed on, some in the, um, very tragic circumstances. And it's going to be great to talk to him. Mike, Mike is probably the most positive-sounding Italian I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> I mean, I come from a half-Italian family where there's lots of negativity and bitterness there, but Mike sounds really, really positive, and it's going to be great to have him. So, yeah, here is my interview with Mike D'Astasio. Hello. Hello, Mike. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Hey, tell me what's going on. How are you? I'm pretty good, pretty good. Uh, we got uh, overcast weather today, but other than that, everything is great. Yeah, it's all good, man. We, you know, as long as we survive, and that's all that counts. That's all that counts, yes. This is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. Well, I'm proud to be on the show. Thanks for reaching out. I appreciate it. Ah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, earlier this year... I had um, got a friend request from you on Facebook. I had no idea who you were, but I accepted, and then I started listening to Real Talk with the Hollywood Kid. And I'll tell you, I'm half Italian, right? And I have never heard a more positive-sounding Italian in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. A lot of people, they, well, I, I get some people sometimes on Facebook, they say, oh, I love your accent. Meanwhile, I hate it. I can't stand it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, stick out. And, you know, if I go to Alabama, it's like, whoa. You know, they'll be like, wow, this guy, where's he from? Mars? You know? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a passion of mine. It's a labor of love to show itself. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, you know, it is. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm, absolutely. I, mean, I, really, I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's like my cousin Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, stick out. You know, I, my, all my buddies are the same way. We, you know, we don't think anything different. You know, and yeah. go on vacation. And if I go on vacation, then I really, really, people really start to say, "Wow, where are you from? You know, you from New York?" I'm like, "No, I'm close, but I'm from Boston." But does he sound like you're from New York? I had a guy on a couple of weeks ago who's from New York. He mm -hmm. said, "What part of New York are you from?" I said, "I'm not from New York." It's <laughs> <laughs> just, just funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, how did? Real talk with the Hollywood kid come about. Um, for me, like I told you, it, 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 I I've always been a movie guy. I've been a movie geek my whole life, and um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was making a delivery one day, about a little, a little bit more than six years ago, and um, to a radio, or to a building, it wasn't built. I guess she would say building. It was a house. We got a tiny little tape, and I, you know, and there was big antenna in the back, back, in, you know, in the backyard, and I'm like, what the hell is this place? So I walked in to make the delivery. Mm -hmm. And just, just like walking into a house, and I said, I, I asked the gentleman, I said, what, you, what is this place? He said, well, we're a radio station. I said, you got to be kidding me. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, we've been on the old radio for almost 50 years. I'm like, wow. And, you know, here locally in Boston. And um, he said, Howard Stern started here as an intern. It's first job in radio. I said, wow. Holy crap. And um, so I told him as a joke, I just, just to make a conversation, I said, you know, can we tell him a free, I like to think I'm a pretty funny guy. I said, can I do a show? And he said, well, what do you do? I says, I'm the Hollywood kid. I go, I'm the big movie geek. You know, I'm a movie guy. I and mean, that's my nickname since I was a kid because every time my friends would get stumped on a movie, a movie line, or an actor, or a director, or a name of a movie, 
I would be right there just to rattle off the answers. And they, after a while, they, they, my buddies would just say, well, ask Mikey. If he gets stuff, ask Mikey. He's a Hollywood kid. He knows everything about movies. Yeah. So I used, so I used that nickname. And uh, so I told that gentleman about my story. And he says, wow, all right, put something together and uh, we'll see what we can do. Wow. And, so uh, it, you know, initially I, I brought in a lot of some local actors mm-hmm. just to get a, you know, have a platform so they can you know, get some exposure. But it just got boring after a while because most of the t- actors in Boston, you know, I've done acting myself. I've, I've, done, I've been in The Sopranos, mm-hmm. The Departed. I do a lot of extra work. i got about 30, 40 movies and television shows under my belt. But all was a background extra in them. But it was just hearing the same stuff over and over again, you know. It's just, you know, I, I need some substance. I need some content. And, um, you know, I, I would have a guy in. He said, well, I was, I, I, I was in such and such movie. Did you have a pot? No, I was an extra. All right, well, this is getting too boring for me. So I, need some, I need some action. I need some content. Then I started reaching out to celebrities, and, um, you know, and it just kept snowballing after that. And um, it's, it's been a lot, of, a lot of work, you know how it is. It's just a lot of fun. I got almost 300 celebrity interviews in the can now, and um, these are well-known household names. Yep. Um, I, li- I like to try to go after the big boys if I can. Wow. And, um, but after a while, you get a reputation, you know. People know you do a good job, and they'll they'll give you some of their clients if they're promoting a project, you know. Oh yeah, I've, that's happened to me a lot this year. And finally, after just grinding for the last three years, I mean, it's finally starting to happen for me now, and I, I can't believe how extraordinary it is. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it, it's it's fun to get a nice email from somebody reaching out to you saying, "Hey." Uh, I like so and so to come on the show, and it's like, oh, I know this guy, or I know this woman. And, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, things like that. And, and again, you do build up a reputation because it, the best advice I always give to people is, if you're a jerk and you know you're, you're ignorant, they will not come to you. Mm-hmm. Period. You know, if you're a nice guy, you have a good reputation in the business. Word of mouth stops to spread, and uh, they'll start forwarding clients to you or me or whatever the case may be. But if you're a jerk and you give the guy crap when he comes on your show and you, you know, you take shots at him, you know, the, you know it's going to go back to whoever he came from, like a publicist or a manager or agent. You know, how'd you make out with that interview in Boston with that guy, Mike? Oh, he's an asshole. Okay, I'll keep that up. I'll put an X next to his name. I won't send him any more of my clients. So that's pretty much how the game works. Yeah. I haven't uh, I haven't taken any any shots really at anybody and stuff, but uh, I have dealt with a lot of unruly managers and stuff, and I'm kind of I'm kind of glad if I have if I don't have a good reputation with them because they just had the uh, the kind of characteristics that you know made me not want to, I shouldn't do business with them in the first place you know because they're shady. Right. So I mean, there, there are, you're gonna run into somebody. You know, obviously you're gonna run into somebody a bad publicist or a manager and. You know, you just, you got to try to weed them out as best you can. And if you got an issue with a manager, you obviously just don't use them anymore. You know, mm-hmm. they're little, if they're a little pushy, if they want this and they want that. I mean, I've had, I've had managers asking me, well, how much? How much for what? How much to have my client come on the show? I, I, I usually offer my, my, people come on my show, I offer them the same price. He says, how much? I said, zero. <laughs> yeah. I, tell, I tell them direct. I tell my to the you know, over the phone or whatever you want to do, say family whatever. I tell my I offer everybody the same price. It's a steady price, it's zero. Because because you coming on my show mm-hmm. or somebody going on your show, for the guy the person that's doing the interview, obviously yeah. it's work. I mean it's not hard work, but I get nothing from this. Now if you come on to promote a book, you wrote a book, that's great. Yeah. I'm, you're coming on my show to promote. I ain't gonna promote you on social media. I'm gonna, you know, promote you on my show. I'm gonna put their links out there where they can buy the book. I get nothing from this. Exactly. You're getting. If I sell one copy, you get you made a dollar. You know what I mean? But you're getting your you're getting your product and your content where you did or your project. You're getting it out. I'm getting. I'm I'm a felicitator. I get it out. Mm-hmm. They can do this. Yeah, you know, they can do it on the shows as well. Obviously, you know, you know, I'm not the only show in town. Right. But again, I mean, I don't. I had who wanted money. I figured it was. I figured it was a couple of guys who wanted money. I'm like, you ain't. I go see you later. Doesn't happen. It ain't happening. 
Yeah, I've only had maybe two or three people ask for money, but that's about it. But the the absolute worst ever is when um, you're trying to get a guest and they say to you, I'll come on your show if you read my book. It's like I'm not some fan you're meeting at a, at a convention or something, you know? Right, 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 right. It's, um, you know, like I say, you got to weed them out. And uh, I, I mean, if people ask Mikey, he's done 300 interviews, there has to be a jerk. There has to be an asshole that came on your show. Always. <laughs> Can I swear? Oh, good. You can swear all you want. Okay, sorry. <laughs> but it's like, you, it's like well, you know, and I tell them, I go honestly, and I'm a pretty honest guy. I really had no bad experiences with people in terms of the, you know, the actor or the celebrity themselves. Mm-hmm. I had zero. I had that one trick. I had one. He wasn't, I think he was on something, so I give him a pass. <laughs> I've had I've had plenty of guests who were on something, but they were a lot of fun and very entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy was just he was just ignorant, and um, I was my my producer wanted to hang the phone up on him. I said, no, no, let him keep going. Let him let him let him make a fool of himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, he was, I'm a street guy, um, so there's not much they can pull over on me because these guys grew up in like Nebraska. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I read pre- people pretty well. Hmm. Um, well, again, I mean, I've, I've been, been very fortunate, and uh, most people have been great. Uh, and, again, it's, their reputation, it, 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 you know, it, that's, that's all you have in this industry. And, um, but, again, it's a lot of fun for me, and I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a good feeling when you get a client, when you book somebody on the show that's a pretty decent name, you know, because, again, you know, it's, it's hard to get. They're hard to get. Absolutely, yeah. Um, what year did you start the show? I started six years ago, so that would be 2014 of June. So it's been, I just had six years. Wow. Um, doing it. Yeah, it's been a while, and I learned a lot of tricks. And, you know, you, know, you learn who's who and what's what, and what are the big agencies, what are the small boutique agencies, um, who has the really big clients, who has, you know, who's just building up their client list. And, you know, sometimes you want to help them out a little bit to get going because then you can get in with them. Maybe maybe they can sign a big big star and they can come to you, but but yeah, you gotta know the you, you gotta know the you know the field. You gotta know who's who. I mean, the big the big agencies for me, the the William Morris endeavors of the world, the CAAs of the world, um, the the um, Co- Rogers and Cowan. Uh, those for me, I can't get in. I can't get in that door. Those are where you get the huge stars, the A listers, and them. I I can't get in. I've tried many times, but again, it's, you know, those people, when you deal with a big, big star, let's say you deal with a, um, I don't know, I don't even, just like an A-lister. Right. Or even an A, or even an A-minus lister. Right. Okay. When you deal with them, and they got a movie that just came out, you know, they get press junkets, mm-hmm. studio set up, the studio set up their interviews. They sit in, like a Tom Cruise, they'll sit in, a, they'll sit in the hotel room all day for eight hours, and, you know, reporters come in for five minutes apiece, ask them a question, take a couple of videos, and leave. So they're not doing radio or podcasts or blogs or vlogs or maybe Zooms. They're not really doing that. In my opinion, I haven't seen it, but um, they're not really going. They don't have to, is what I'm trying to say, because the studio does the publicity for the movie, so that's they're attached to the studio's publicity department. Yeah, I, t- I personally do, don't want to go after like a huge A-listers and stuff because so many of them, they, they do, you know, hundreds of interviews and, you know, they, they have a tendency to repeat themselves, you know, and plus the other the, the other guys that you already interviewed, they probably give you dirt on them <laughs> because they're, yeah, they're, right. they're not very nice people, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're protected. They're guarded by publicists and managers and, you know, things like that. Yeah. Who, who, who's your first uh, big celebrity interview, though? My first big, my first celebrity guest I ever had, I reached out to him on on Twitter. I think it, I think it was on Twitter. I reached out to him on Twitter on some social media platform. And uh, Robert Davi. Oh yeah. Robert Davi was in Goonies. He was a License to Kill. He right. Done tons of stuff in movie and television shows. And uh, he was a great guy. And. Um, very nice guy. You'll never hear me talk bad about Robert Dottie because he did me a really big favor. And he was my first celebrity interview. And I, I sent him a message the day before. I said, hey, Robert, you know, we're going to hook up tomorrow night for the interview. And he wrote back. He said, Mike, I can't do it tomorrow night. Now, I, I was green at the time. I really didn't know much. 
it, I promote it all over the place, everywhere, social media, big interview, celebrity interview, Robert Darby, you know, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Then, then he canceled. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> what do I do now? You know, what do I do now? I look stupid. I was like, you know, do what I like. What happened to the interview, you know? Yeah. And I had everybody waiting to hear it. But um, he said, can you do it tomorrow in the morning instead of the night? Yeah. I said, yeah. I said, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, meanwhile, I had to make some plans on my, my side because I was at work. I, I had to run down to the radio station and take an early lunch. And um, that's what I did. I did the interview for him. And he just, I woke him up. He got out of bed. He took a red eye from L.A. to New Orleans. And I called him in New Orleans. And he did the interview. And he was just, you know, he's a gentleman. He was, I, you know, I can't, I, I'll never forget what he did for me. That was very nice of him. Because, you know, you're going to put yourself in his position. I, maybe I wouldn't have done that personally. Would I have done that? I don't know. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice of him to do that, and I'm very grateful. Yeah, my, my first guest was Diane Franklin from all the '80s teen movies, you know, Better Off Dead and Last American Virgin and Bill and Ted's Excellent oh, yeah, Adventure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that movie. Oh yeah, and I, I recommend her. She's been on a total of seven times because <laughs> in that first year, I had trouble getting guests, and she would come on whenever I'd ask her to, and she's a, a wonderful lady. Wonderful. But I've interviewed um, a bunch of people you've interviewed, too, like um, Tom Dreesen, Bill Boggs, Burt Ward, Marion Ross. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're great. They're great. They're all. But Tom Dreesen is a champ. He's a mensch. He, oh. He, he's a great guy. Wonderful guy. You know, I know he's got a new book out. I was going to try to get him back on. I know he's got a new book come out. He just had a, wrote a biography. So I'll see if I can get him back on. Yeah, he actually, um, he actually messaged me last night about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's very, you know, on the, he's on the spot. You know what I mean? He does all his setups. You know, like he called me one day out of Clear Blue and I'm like, who the hell is this? He's like, hey, Mike, Tom Dreesen. Now, me, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an older guy. Yeah. And I grew up watching Tom Dreesen on the Tonight Show. And then I told him point blank. I said, holy shit, this guy's calling me. But, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. But, yeah, I told him, I said, dude, I grew up watching you on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. I used to see you come on, I let him in. You know, all that shit, and um, just a very nice guy. Great, great guy. Very down-to-earth kind of guy. Very humble. Yeah. You know. Sweetheart of a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Has there been anybody you really wanted, but you've had trouble getting? Um, you know, you know, every day or every, every once or twice a week, you know, I'm constantly sending emails out to, to you know, again, publishers and managers. You know, and if I send out 20 emails a week. If I get one response, that one response is, hey, Mike, thanks so much for reaching out to so-and-so, but they're unavailable. And that happens quite often. And uh, again, we talked about trying to get guests. Um, mm-hmm. I don't really, I tried, I'm trying to think. This, I don't even know, it's a good question. I, I, I just don't really focus on one person. You know what I mean? Because you know, yeah. when you're doing a show every week, you have to have somebody to, in the you know on the you know on the on deck circle. So wherever the body is, you put them in. You know. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it just it's just a constant battle to get people, and um, you know, and, and that's why I freestyle a lot. I do a lot of Hollywood murder mysteries. I'll do a um, you know, I'll, I I've been getting into the mob side. I that, I that Michael Francis on. He was a captain in the Colombo crime family. That's one of my best interviews. A couple weeks ago, I had um, retired FBI agent Jack Garcia. Yeah. He infiltrated, he infiltrated the, Genovese, the Genovese crime family. I did hear he that was, one, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. But I, I started getting into some of that. And I'm starting to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I'm, trying, I'm not going to segue away from the celebrities. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just, again, Whoever I can line up on deck, it doesn't have to be an actor. Yeah. I mean, if I can get a mafioso guy or somebody like that, because they do really well. They, they generate a lot of publicity to your, to your feeds, to your YouTube channel, or to your, your Twitter, or, or to your uh, Facebook page. You know, because you, you, people are intrigued by that. I find that the more, like, I do, like, mini reels on, on my YouTube channel. Yeah. So I, do like a, I do, like, an eight, ten minute mini view. I mean, I'm... Um, background on an actor, um, but I find that when I do a mini reel on a guy who's got a lot of baggage, yeah. who's a drunk, who was you know you know fighting with the studios, I get more I generate more more activity. So when you go with a guy 
playing the clean, sh- clean slate is a nice guy. People don't like to listen to that. They like to listen to the bad shit. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know if, I do, if I do a mur- Hollywood murder mystery on George Reeves, Superman. Yeah, I saw know, that. People love that. You get, com- you get comments, you get shares, you get likes. You get a lot of activity to your feed. And uh, so I try to do some of that. I segue and I, I'll get into anything. It doesn't have to be a celebrity actor or a movie star or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like to interview the mob, mob guys because I know tons of it. I know all of that shit. And I even have these mob guys go, wow, you know your stuff. And, you know, I know a lot of that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I read a lot. I've been around those, those types of people my whole life. And, you know, you know these people and you know how they operate. But, yeah. When when you get a uh, certain guest, do you ever go listen to um, another? Re- yeah, all the time. I mean, it, it, and I've been complimented by many many of my guests that say, "Wow, you really know." I've been, I mean, I've had I had a guy named gentleman named Stuart Tankin on. Stuart Tankin. I love him. Uh, yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. And I had him on. I researched him, and he came on the show. And he said, "I asked him a couple of questions," and he says, "How did you know that?" I go, well, you know, research, whatever. He goes, okay. Then at the end of the interview, I asked him another question from right field, and he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can hear it in the interview. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You must, this is, he goes, this is verbatim. He goes, this is getting creepy. He goes, you must know some of my family members. I said, no, this is my research, but, you know. <laughs> and, um, so basically, you have to research a guest. I mean, I've listened to podcasts, and it's like, is this guy so real? Yeah. Dude, like he it's like he did one. He's like, yeah, you were in that movie, so and so. And the guy's like, no, I wasn't in that. Oh, you were in that TV show, so and so. No, I wasn't in that. But dude, you gotta know your shit, man. You have to know. And that's one thing I pride myself on is my research. And if you listen to some of my interviews, and I don't like to ask questions like, well, what made you want to get into acting? You know, because look what they like. They've never heard that fucking question before, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you've never heard that one. So you gotta hit a mic. That's why I do. I try to hit them from all different directions. And you know, and that involves a lot of research. Mm-hmm. And you have to be, and you have to be like an attorney. You have to ask, like you're asking a question to a defendant that you already know the answer to what he's going to ask. You have to be, a lot of ways, you're going to be like, a, like I said, like a lawyer. You know, so tell me about working, you know, with this guy. You know, like oh, that was great. And, oh yeah, that's right. You guys work together on another project. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, things like that. You know. Exactly. Yeah, that's a great, great way of putting it. Yeah. Who, who's been your favorite interview so far? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, I've had a lot. I mean, the, I, the, the perfect answer to that question mm-hmm. is all of them are great. But <laughs> but I would say I had Mo Green from The Godfather on. He was one of my first, in the, like my fifth or sixth interview. Alex he, Rocco. Yeah, that, that, you know, from now that I think about it, yes, that question, who did I want to get? And I, I, I couldn't get, but well, this guy, I did get. I, I, when I first started doing my show, I made a list of people that I want to get on the show. Right. Celebrities I want to get on the show. Alex Rocco was at the top. He played Mo Green in The Godfather. Mm-hmm. That scene, you know who I am, I'm Mo Green, I made my phones when you were going out with cheerleaders. That scene with Al Pacino. Because he grew up in the next town over to me. And he was involved with the mafia and the rackets. And his backstory is, if you ever research Alex Rocco, his real name is Joe Petricone. He grew up in Somerville, Massachusetts, which is the next town over to me. And back in the 60s and 70s, Somerville was infested with the mob, the mafia. The Winter Hill Gang, they called it. Mm-hmm. We made movies about it and everything. White Belgium, loosely based over there and stuff. And um, so his story was he got in a big beef with a guy and they wanted to kill him. Literally wanted to kill him. So he got out of town. So he moved out to L.A. to hide. Mm-hmm. And while he was out in Los Angeles hiding out from the mafia, he got a job working at this bar where all these actors, all these old actors hung out. Yeah. Before they became famous. And that bar was known that like, like, a, like a casting director would call there looking for extras. But the, the bartender would do, did a lot of shows. He was an extra. So right. he was in the bathroom one day and he told me the story. He said, Micah, I was working in the bar one day in the phone rang and said, hi, this is so-and-so. I'm looking for Joe. And Alex Rocco goes, well, Joe's, Joe's away right now. He's on vacation. And actually, the guy was in the hospital. He goes, but I'm an actor. He goes, oh, you are? He goes, yeah, what do you mean? He goes, Mike, I've got two days worth of work on Batman. 
from that call and the rest of his history. He went out to do The Godfather and so many other huge movies and television shows, Golden Girls and everything. But he was one of my top guys I wanted to get, and I got him. And that was the last interview before he died. I did the interview in, I think, April, and he died in June. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I, was, I didn't know he was sick. He had, he had to get pancreatic cancer. And he got on the phone, and I was expecting a big, you know, guy was full of piss and vinegar, tough guy from Somerville, you know, that kind of stuff. And he got on the phone, he sounded like he was 90. Hi, Mike. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? I thought he had the wrong guy. But he was sick at the time. And, uh, yeah, I was... That's one of my favorites and uh, my all-time favorites. And there's been many. Um, again, Michael Francis, the colorful crime family captain, which is up on my YouTube channel. Um, people can go there, real talk with the Hollywood kid, subscribe. And uh, that, a lot of my good stuff is up there. I'm trying to upload them little by little. And it's a process. It takes a couple hours just to put one, one, one video up there. And uh, I'm not really a tech guy. Yeah. I've, I've had maybe 99% of the people I've interviewed have been great. I've only had like a small percentage of jerks, um, just under 10 at least. And uh, my favorite interviews I do, I love interviewing actors who got out of the business instead of staying in, you know, actors who did like cult movies or TV show or something right. that got out of the business. To me, they got far better stories and they they, they got very interesting present times you know they got out of the business for various reasons whether you know it was drugs or fame or you right. know hashtag me too or just rolls dried up you know stuff like that yeah um you know i've had a look i bet I, most of the people i deal with is a lot of the old golden age of hollywood stuff which is what i love i love the classic films i'm a purist um and i deal with a lot of them the older people and you know i've had some young kids on so nice, so polite, you know, all that shit. But there's not much that I can mine out of them. You know what I mean? It's, right. Like, tell me, tell me about where, like, like, I get these older people on. You know, guy comes on, he's been in, you know, off of the, since the 50s making movies. Tell me about working with Marlon Brando. Oh, Marlon Brando is great. Tell me about working with Pacino. Oh, Pacino. You know, I can get stories like that. But when you got a young kid on there who's been, he doesn't really, he's got a couple of projects under his belt. You know, there's not much you can get out of them. You know what I mean? They can tell you a little bit about, a bit about the business, but I like to hear the behind-the-scenes stories. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, what, that's what I think people like to hear anyways. Absolutely. And uh, I, I could I could believe you got an interview with Larry King. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, Larry King. Larry King, actually, it's funny because he today I got to talk to his best friend. I have to call him at 5 o'clock my time, at 2 o'clock your time. Um, from 2 o'clock, no. I'm going to call him. I don't know. I'm going to call him tonight. Anyway, his best friend, a gentleman named Bud Moss. Yeah. Bud Moss, Bud Moss is Rita Hayworth's agent. He was Tom Cruise's agent for a little while before he became Tom Cruise. Uh, but he's had so many huge, huge celebrity guests. I mean, um, actors that he rep. But uh, Larry's great. And, um, you know, Larry gets a bad reputation. Everybody makes fun of him. Hey, hey, I'm Larry King. Hey, fuck you. You go get Larry King, asshole. And that's why I try to pride myself saying nobody gets Larry King, but I do. I got Larry King. And it's an interesting, and I'll tell you how I got Larry King, which which is a beautiful part of this story. Yeah. I worked at the post office delivering mail, okay? Yeah. So so one day I'm going to the mail, I'm going to this little office building, and I see all the letters saying Larry King Enterprise, Larry King Enterprise, Larry King, Larry King. What the fuck is all this Larry King shit? So I bring the mail to the guy, the gentleman, Kid Bobby. My my eight bill on great. I said, Bobby, what's with this fucking Larry King shit? He said, What do you mean? I go, What's all the letters with Larry King? Is that Larry King? He goes, Yeah, that's Larry King. He's my client. I go, Larry King is your client. He goes, Yeah, Larry King. Look, look at fucking pictures on my wall. I said, Holy shit! I go, You get him on my show. He goes, All right, not possible. So we talked to him, and uh, Larry great, Larry great, Larry trip. Yeah. But that was a big deal for me because. Not because it just he's Larry King, but I grew up watching Larry King every night on CNN. When somebody big would die, like Elizabeth Taylor would die, he, I'd be like, oh, shit, i got to watch Larry King tonight because I like the old stuff. And he'd have an old gentleman who passed away named James Bacon on. James yeah. Bacon used to be a writer for the Hollywood AP, um, Hollywood Reporter. I'm not sure if he wrote for the Hollywood Reporter, but he did a lot of, he was a big journalist back in the old days. And he, you know, he went out with Mal Monroe. But he would come on every time a big celebrity died and we would sit there and talk all night about where's the tale about Mal Monroe and that's what I loved about his show and I, I told that to him and uh, Larry's a gentleman um, I'm not gonna try I'm trying to get him back on but he's, he's still busy right now he's still working he's still, he's, he does a couple of shows on YouTube now oh yeah um, he's, still, he's still very active God bless him he's 86 years old um, 
but he's a good guy. I'm going to try to get him back on, and um, i got to talk to his friend tonight, but and um, we'll see what happens. But, but anyways, but, you know, that, that's, one of, that's one of my biggest ones. Oh, wow, that's so yeah, cool. Know, but but yeah. the story behind the story is funny, because that's why I always, sometimes I pound my chest when you see these guys. Hey, listen, I got Larry King, so they will shut the game over. Yeah. So, yeah I, I challenge you to go get Larry King. I challenge you. All you fucking Howard Stearns of the world, and these fucking big shots over here in Boston, these clowns, I got a lot of clowns around here in Boston, believe me, I tell you. And, um, you know, they all think they're movie stars because they have some, some maybe they had a guy who played for the Red Sox on, the, on, on, their, on their show. Big fucking deal. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I mean so you, see them all, you see them all on social media, like they got a huge show, like the, the next big thing. It's like, dude, your fucking show. My 10 year old can book better, big, bigger stars than that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be arrogant about it, but all they do is pour shit all day long on social media saying how good they are. It's like, what are you fucking kidding me? I know, I know. It's It's like, dude, I've 300 fucking people on there. They're all fucking almost 90% of them are household names. 90%. You you got a guy who fucking juggles from a circus. The fuck is that? You know what I mean? Yeah. You got a fire eater from the circus. Oh, wow. Ooh, can't wait to listen to that shit. You know what I mean? Please. Yeah. yeah. I know. I think right. Social media has spawned a lot of um, narcissism of a different level. Yeah. And it's like, you know, a guy like me, I'm out there. You know, I'm busting my ass. You know, I, I work a full-time job. I work two jobs. And plus, I do a show. I produce a show. I book the guests. I write the scripts. I do this. I do that. I do the research. And, and so you see these clowns. And it's like, what are you kidding me? Well, that's why I tell people, well, listen, go get Larry King and then we can talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, I know you can't get him. You know, it's impossible. Yeah. It, you know, it's almost impossible. Do you, but, I mean, uh, sometimes you got to find your chest, Tommy. You know, you know, you know, you, you got to. You have to. It's the only way that people get attracted to you and, and what you do. Because if you're a nice guy all the time, eh, Tommy, a nice guy. Yeah, well, fuck it, let's go over here. He's, I like the other guy. He's an asshole. I like, I like the old the assholes better. Uh, it's just the way it is. Yeah, you can't win sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you have any um, further goals in the future regarding the show or show business in general? Uh, I, I, I want to get some, try to generate some national um, attention for the show mm-hmm. in terms of you know getting write ups in major magazines or, or newspapers or getting you know. Get my my ugly face on other shows in terms of you know live interviews and things like that. Getting some more notoriety for the show is always always something that I'm trying to do. And uh, you know it's difficult if you don't hire a publicist or a manager or something like that to that effect. But um, I'm trying to get the show to be more mainstream. And that there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of money involved. I mean anybody can get on the cover of People magazine if you got a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that's what I'm trying to do right now. But it, it's a process. And um, again, you, you, you know, you're trying to put so many, you know, sticks in the fire, maybe one of them's going to catch. And that, that's what I try to do. You got uh, good sponsors? Yeah, I got some, I got some steady sponsors. Um, you know, it, 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 they're very good. And, um, you know, it, it's. You, you try the best you can to get get sponsors, and it's very difficult. Um, my people are solid, thank God. And uh, but I, you know, you're always looking for more. I'm always looking for more. You know, the people to advertise in your show, and um, so it, it is. It is. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it that's difficult. And um, again, to, to get to the point where I am now, yeah, you know, I'm just a street kid. I've never interviewed anybody in my life. I don't. I don't even know how to. You know do that kind of stuff. But I progressed and I've, I've learned a lot. I self-taught myself a lot of it. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to tele- I watch a television show with interviews and things like that. You, know, you watch the guys like the Larry Kings of the world. I mean, Larry King never asked the hard-hitting questions. He yeah. got a lot of flack for that his whole career. But he worked steady for 25 years on a national television station making millions of dollars. You know? Yeah. Do you want to hint uh, who your next guest is going to be? Um, you know, it's always a toss-up, Tommy. I don't be honest with you. Right now, I don't have anybody. I'm working on somebody right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't, sometimes I throw a repeat on. Yeah. I'll just do my own. I'll just, but I don't want to get on there and talk about for an hour 
about a you know, movie or something because I don't want to dilute the product. You know, it, yeah. I, I, it, I can always just, I can always sit there and talk for an hour if I want, but who's going to listen to me on the radio all day? <laughs> and we do it here on the radio here in Boston first. Yeah. And it goes up in podcast form. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even think that um, solo podcasts are are that great, you know. Yeah, it's you know, the, the, for me, I tell people on the here locally, I see them on the radio. There's a little mystique to that, you know. People are like, oh, I'm on the radio, you know. But radio is, it's good and bad. I'm also on an app. It's called um, Racketeer Radio. Mm-hmm. It airs every Wednesday night at ten thirty. And um, if your audience wants to download that, that's a, it's a free app. It's a, it's a great app. It's all like. You know, big band, Frank Sinatra, Louis Armstrong, swing music, things like that. It's a really good. They got all the old Hollywood, like the old, um, you know, murder mystery shows on, like, like Jack Benny. You know, when they used to do shows on the radio before television, a lot of stuff was on the radio before television came out. And they do like Abbott and Costello stuff. It's called Racketeer Radio. It's a pretty cool app, and uh, it's free. But I really want to want to push your audience to my YouTube channel, Real Talk with the Hollywood Kid, R E E L. Some yep. great content on there, some great interviews on there. Um, Larry King's on there. Um, George Maharis from Route 66 is on there. Yep. Great, great interviews. Yeah, there's some good ones on there. I'm a subscriber, too. Oh, thank you. And um, I, I just did what I got. I never tried to upload tonight. I interviewed a gentleman. You could probably get him. Maybe you, you know David Oman? David Oman? David Oman, no. He, I had a guy last, two weeks ago named Scott Michaels. Oh, yeah, I know Scott. I don't know him personally, but I know who he is. I, cause... I had him on my show a couple of weeks ago. Scott's great. Scott knows that. Scott does yeah. a lot what I love. I love, the, I love that stuff. You know, the old stuff and stuff you never knew about before. And, uh, so this gentleman named David Oman, I had him on last week. He, he lives 150 feet. He built his house 150 feet away from where Sharon Tate was murdered. Right. And um, his house is supposedly haunted by the people that got killed in his house. And, it, you know, all these uh, paranormal, paranormal shows have been in there, and it, the place is like one of the most, it's the Mount Everest of haunted houses, they call it. It's like the most haunted house in the country. And um, he came on, he was a guy, and he's doing a live event on the 21st and the 22nd. He's doing seances and stuff, he can scream it live, and yeah, he's a real zany guy, he's got a book out, good guy. Yeah, I, I have this friend um, who actually worked for Scott at Dearly Departed Tours, uh, Terry Bolo, um, she's a founding member of the Groundlings, the the sketch comedy group in L.A., and uh, she was in um, the original Carrie, and um, she had small parts in Pee Wee's Big Adventure and um, Oh God, Bo- uh, the Oh God movies. What's her first name? Terry Bolo. Yeah, Terry Bolo, I know the name. Yeah. Yeah, she would be a great guest to have. She's got great stories about uh, the Groundlings and being. Um, on on the set of movies and stuff. She was a casting assistant at Warner Brothers. She's in a lot of classic late 70s, early 80s Warner Brothers movies like Private Benjamin and the Oh God movies. Uh, Yeah, she'd be great. I I actually had Piper Laurie on my show. She took uh, Carrie's mother, uh, Carrie. I had Piper Laurie on her show. She was great. Piper Laurie, yeah. I was supposed to meet her at a convention a couple years ago, and then she had to cancel because of health reasons. But... um, yeah, I mean, uh, t- Terry would be a great interview, though. But I want to thank you so much for coming on today, Mike. I think you have a great show, and I, I hope you, you keep it going. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. And um, to your audience out there, uh, just uh, follow me on social media. Just type in the Hollywood Kid, um, Real Talk with the Hollywood Kid, R-E-E-L, Real Talk with the Hollywood Kid. And if you subscribe, you can subscribe to my channel. Um, it's going pretty good for me. I'm trying to get to a thousand real quick, and we're almost at 500 subscribers. Is um, you know, then we can take that. When we get to a thousand, I can start doing live shows. YouTube won't let you do live shows, a live stream, unless you have a thousand subscribers. Yeah. And, uh, I can do. You know, I can do. I can mix it up a lot when I can go live on YouTube, which is a, uh, it's a new animal, and I'm, I'm just starting to learn how to use it. And uh, if your audience can go there and subscribe, that would be great. And uh, tell me. I mean, you do a great job, and you should be commended for what you do. And, uh, you, you know, I appreciate you reaching out to me, and this has been a, really an honor for me to come on your show because I see you a lot on social media, and you're doing the right thing. You're out there, and you're promoting, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. Oh, thank you. I try. I try. And, um, yes, this was really awesome, and 
I hope uh, the next show you do is going to be the, the most awesome one. And thank you so much, and have a great day, Mike. Yeah, you too, Tommy. When is this going to air, Tommy? Uh, just in the next couple hours. Oh, cool. Yeah, maybe you can uh, send me a message or something so I can promote it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, let me know and I'll promote it on all the social media. Okay. All right, Tommy, I appreciate it, man. Be safe. Okay, you too, sir. Hey, buddy, I appreciate it. Have a great day. Yep, bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Mike Nastasio. Ain't he a cool dude? What a nice guy, huh? And great, great passion for Hollywood. Old Hollywood, I should say. And I hope his show continues and goes further than it has. Because it's a great show. Check it out on YouTube. Real Talk with the Hollywood Kids. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Hi, dudes.